Okay, oh, very well. No, no, no problem. So it's a pleasure to have today Anton Petrunin from uh, Penn State University, and is going to is going to talk about graph comparison, right? Yes, that's correct. So everybody see uh, what I write. Yes, absolutely. We time, see everything. First time I use this uh, way to present. So I, and uh, also let me apologize that I'm giving talk on geometry on an analysis seminar, but I think uh, I think you will find it a little bit interesting, uh, at least uh, it's a little bit related to analysis and uh, of course, but of course it's geometry. I thought like I would prefer, I, I have some topics closer to analysis, but I thought it's better to talk about something I'm interested at the moment. Um, so graph comparison, uh, essentially it's a way to uh, right inequality using a graph. So what uh, what is it, right? So we think of uh, endpoints in uh, metric space x, and uh, we have like if we have endpoints, we have like roughly n square distances between them, and we want to write. Uh, I mean. Uh, some inequality on this uh, number of distances. And of course, when n grows, the uh, questions, which inequality you can write, uh, how to write, which inequalities are important is like first. And uh, roughly, I want to advertise the following way to write such inequality. You encode it by a graph. So you draw some graph, uh, which labeled by the uh, points in your uh, space, okay? And uh, you think uh, of, uh, so the, the collection of points satisfy this um, uh, inequality encoded by this graph, this graph comparison. If you can map this point into Hilbert space uh, in such a way that if two points uh, xi, uh, xj are adjacent, then after uh, mapping, so I will uh, draw the corresponding points by Tweedle, right? Uh, my map is, uh, uh, my map is xi maps to xi twiddle. So usually when you do comparison picture, you to make twiddle for the, uh, for the image. So you, if two points adjacent by an uh, adjacent in a graph, then you have this inequality, in the inequality. If they are not, uh, then you have opposite inequality. Uh, okay, I hope everybody understand the definition. So, and uh, the rest, uh, and if not, please ask questions because otherwise uh, there is no reason to go further. Uh, and uh, roughly the rest of the talk, I will try to advertise this way of writing um, inequalities. So, Anton, may I ask a question? So okay. when you're coming from your, your metric space X and you have yeah. just these points, yeah. how do you decide which one is adjacent and, and which ones are no, not? No, 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 like I, I start with the graph. Let, let me maybe, give, ah, okay. uh, let me give an example. Right? Yeah. For example, triangle inequality uh, can be encoded by the following graph. Okay. Of course, it's kind of stupid to check triangle inequality in the metric space, but you may think that you are working in the uh, space with a distance function, which is not uh, like, which doesn't correspond to distance. So for any pair of points, you have some non-negative number, right? So, and uh, this um, defines symmetric space if it satisfies this graph comparison. So for any three points, uh, in my metric space, I can map them to Hilbert space. 
which, by the way, can be defined uh, without uh, mentioning metric rate, right? but it doesn't matter. In such a way, these two distances uh, not getting larger, and this this distance not getting smaller. Okay, so are you okay with this example? Uh, I mean, did yes, I, I ask your question? Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay, so uh, there are some. So that's the first example, and uh, there are other examples, right? So you may think uh, that actually, yeah, right. You you may think that I'm trying to generalize triangle inequality, right? The question: What will happen if I do next step? So the next, uh, let me just uh, say, like like so far, I discussed only graph with three vertices, right? And now I will explain how Alexander comparison can um, can be encoded in such a graph and it's very easy you have to can you, can you sorry for stopping you can you go back to the, the previous example so what was to, the, graph to, the to the example of triangle inequality right yeah what, what so what is the map now from x to x tilde uh, so what triangle inequality means that if I have two like these three sides a b c then c is less or equal than a plus b right now uh, I have these vertices say uh, x y and z right and I want to map them into Hilbert space so I find I want to find three points z twiddle y twiddle in the Hilbert space such that these two distances are small or equal and this distance is big or equal if I find these three points then this comparison uh, whatever uh, for comparison for this graph holds okay so, so it's a, a so one yeah, just uh, sorry for just to understand the so you're saying there is a graph comparison if you have three points so you have uh, one map so like to define, to define graph to define graph comparison i start with graph i assume i start with this graph then uh, this graph comparison defines triangle inequality okay on, on which you start with a graph and a metric space or just a graph? No, 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 wait a second. For every graph is just space. graph is just three vertices and two edges. It's just abstract, I think. I'm not sure, like combinatorical okay. data. Right. And I'm I'm saying that uh, this graph comparison holds in metric space if for any three points uh, and for any labeling of the three points by the vertices of the graph, I have this model picture. Okay. Okay. So you, Thank you. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Right. So, so now, oh, by the way, I forget to say that uh, everything, uh, like uh, many things uh, which I will say, uh, will uh, are joined with uh, Nina Lebedeva and Vladimir Zolotov. So if I will forget some, uh, something that likely belongs to us. Actually, my contribution is minimal at this, uh, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so Alexander comparison. So you have uh, spaces with curvature bounded uh, below by Alexander in Alexander sense and curvature bounded above in Alexander space, and they can be encoded in these two graphs. Right. So um, maybe just. Uh, if like lyrical digression, if you just imagine that you want to generalize triangle inequality and you start to think, okay, triangle is a something, uh, triangle inequality holds if there is a model triangle in Hilbert space. Uh, and by the way, I say Hilbert space, but uh, instead of saying the Euclidean space of sufficiently large dimension, right? So I just want to keep dimension sufficiently large. It doesn't matter if it's uh, really Hilbert space, right? So, um, you may think the triangle inequality holds if the, there is a model triangle, a triangle in Hilbert space with the same uh, sides. And you may think like, what 
is an analog of uh, triangle inequality for four points. Um, and the answer, like the, the, the way you would, like you might think that it simply means that there are four points in Hilbert space, uh, which are like with, with the same size. And it's uh, kind of advanced exercise, but it's, uh, it's not trivial exercise, but uh, if you know Alexander geometry, uh, you would do it uh, easily. If you don't know Alexander geometry, then you would solve it and in, reinvent half of Alexander geometry to prove that if this condition hold, then uh, say uh, your space is length space uh, complete, then it's simply isometric to convex subsets in the uh, uh, Hilbert space. So it's uh, like not interesting condition. It doesn't like, I mean, it gives you something quite boring. But it turns out that there are two reasons. Like, uh, so uh, you, you may think like you have, um, uh, you have, uh, you, you can see the space of all four points metric spaces. There are uh, some subset of uh, this space which embeddable in the Euclidean space. So there are four points with the same distances. And there are two reasons for the uh, for not existence of such embedding. And uh, they can be encoded in these two inequalities, right? So by using this graph. So it's kind of uh, you can consider this as an evidence that uh, graph comparison is a good thing, right? At least it encodes something we something we know, right? Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, and maybe let me uh, state uh, one question of Gromov. Uh, which I think uh, it's uh, uh, unlikely that it will be answered ever, right? But uh, the question is like which which finite finite uh, a metric spaces uh, spaces uh, can be isometrically embedded into uh, spaces of uh, curvature bounded uh, uh, non-negative non curvature uh, in the sense of Alexandrov or uh, curvature bounded below uh, by zero, right? So that's uh, like spaces with uh, uh, this uh, graph comparison and the spaces with this graph comparison. Right. So uh, it seems like at first, if you think about this question, it seems like uh, there should be an answer, right? Because uh, uh, get like you, like how, how the, like you can encode the space of uh, such metric by a matrix, a square matrix where you put like, uh, the square distances um, in the uh, as a component, so you have zeros on the diagonal. And uh, the uh, condition supposed to be supposed to define the cone in space of such metrics. So since uh, you rescale cat zero space, then you mu can multiply this matrix by positive constant. And still there, since if two spaces with non-negative curvature, non-positive curvature, A and B, uh, the product of spaces also have non-negative or non-positive curvature. Um, you also have that it's convex. So it's a convex corner. What can be like, I mean, it's uh, defined by some algebraic inequality, the question how to find it. Uh, the problem, I think, um, there is a chance to solve this problem for the small uh, number of points. But if you know, 
the answer in general, you would know too much about Riemannian geometry. It would be very surprising if somebody would answer this question. Okay, so maybe let me continue to talk about, um, uh, right, so maybe just, uh, it's still part of introduction, right? So like why I want to write inequality using a graph. All right, so why not to, in principle, of course, by uh, tarski zedenberg theorem, you could rewrite it in equivalent form by algebraic, uh, algebraic, algebraic inequalities, by system of algebraic inequalities. But uh, there are two questions. First of all, it's not easy, <laughs> right? At least I don't know how to do this. Uh, for particular graphs, very simple graphs. And secondly, uh, why you want it, right? So maybe when you apply inequality, it's easier to work with graphs than, uh, than with uh, uh, these inequalities, which you maybe cannot write, yes. And maybe let me just make a concrete example. Uh, if you, um, there is a there is a uh, so-called so the there is an equality which follows from this graph comparison, right? You have just three with many uh, like uh, I don't know how to call this a star, right? So you have a star tree, right? One vertex connected with everybody else. Right, and uh, you have uh, from this you get uh, inequality by which I think was discovered independently uh, by uh, Urschlank, Victor Schroeder, and uh, Theodor Sturm. Uh, Theodor Sturm. Uh, Theodor Sturm didn't appear uh, completely here. Let me do this somehow. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so um, uh, th there is an algebraic, like uh, you can extract certain algebraic data, uh, certain algebraic inequalities, but it turns out that it's not, uh, does not uh, include everything. So this uh, graph comparison strongly at least for six points, right? I'm not sure if I want to talk about uh, uh, the inequality of Urs, of, of Lang, uh, Schroeder and Sturm, but if you will ask me, I will do this, right? Nobody asks. Okay, so um, so I, I, I finished with uh, introduction. So the rest of the talk will be, I will just give you examples which shows that, uh, I mean, it makes sense to consider this type of uh, inequalities. Any questions? No? Okay. So uh, first uh, I will, uh, I start with discussion of uh, the uh, theorem I, of- I, I, Sorry, I have a small question. Is there mm -hmm. a, I'm trying to think about it. Is there a way of, of capturing hyperbolicity, like the fa the notion of, of thin uh, triangles uh, in such a way? Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, so in it's, order to simplify questions, right? I can see the curvature greater or equal zero or curvature less or equal zero. Right, so, and by that reason, I take um, take comparison, like the, my comparison space is Hilbert space, right, which is zero, uh, has zero curvature. Of course, you can take uh, infinite dimensional uh, Lobachevsky space or infinite dimensional sphere, and you will get uh, similar inequalities for the, you can write similar inequalities for uh, other curvature bounds, but, uh, I mean, uh, is it like uh, oh, if, you oh, would, okay. if you would try if you would try to write it algebraically, it will be 
extremely hard, but in if you write it in terms of graphs, it will be the same graphs, right? So you just, yeah. So did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so. Um, Uh, so uh, I want to talk about uh, a theorem of Tetsu Toyoda, which uh, says the following: that roughly uh, it's a partial answer to Gromov's question for five points in Kadzero space. So uh, five point point. Uh, space uh, is isometric, oops, sorry, uh, to a subspace of cat zero, if and only if uh, comparison, the com uh, square comparison holds. So roughly it's negative result, right? So you get from, from four points, it's easy to see that this is the only condition, if and only if condition. So you, this uh, uh, comparison simply describes all the possible four point sets uh, in cat zero space. But it says that for five points, you will not get anything new. In fact, for six points, you will get something new. But then it's a kind of, uh, I, will, I will talk about conjecture a um, uh, little later. So that, uh, that was proved by uh, Tetsu Toyoda. And uh, what we found uh, a simple proof is Nina Lebedeva. And I think like proof is uh, uh, funny enough that I, so I, roughly I want to, to show, to, to sketch the proof quickly, okay. So uh, in principle, like the one condition, if it sits, if the four point, five point set sits in cat zero space, then of course it satisfy uh, this four point condition is pretty much definition of cat zero space. If you didn't use to this definition, then use it for thin triangles, then it's like exercise to show that these two conditions are equivalent for length spaces. So the question is opposite, right? which uh, seems to be very simple, right? You have a very simple object, six distances between four points. Uh, and you have certain inequality on these uh, six distances uh, defined by this square, right? And uh, for any collection of such distances satisfying this uh, inequalities, you have to construct, uh, sorry, Sorry, I said six, uh, you have five points and uh, whatever, right, 10 distances, sorry for this, all right. So for, for any 10 distances satisfying these conditions, you have to uh, construct an Alexander space with non-positive curvature, which uh, uh, doesn't look like a hard problem, but actually, uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> like uh, uh, maybe somewhere between linear algebra and uh, convex uh, analysis and 10 dimensional space, uh, which uh, I mean, it in principle, it might be as hot as you wish, right? So the, until you solve it, right? So it, and uh, the original uh, uh, solution of Toyota was uh, like rather long and uh, we found a I think a little bit more, more, more like conceptual um, uh, construction. So what, what I will just uh, present quickly. Okay. So uh, first of all, where this um, uh, non-negatively uh, curved uh, spaces can appear, right? So there is a, we need a source of such spaces. And there is such source. Assume you have space time uh, and you have a convex set in the space time. 
then uh, you can divide it into few pieces. You have two uh, space like the boundary. You look at the boundary of uh, convex set in space time. You have a, a space like heads above and below, and you have a side of the uh, surface which is kind of space uh, space time has space time uh, structure on it right so um, these things and this thing are, uh, have negative curvature here is zero and uh, this thing also have certain uh, uh, curvature condition also that it's uh, like uh, space-time sink. And I, I think, by the way, this kind of funny object, um, the surface of convex set in the, um, in the space-time. Uh, because it's a little bit reminds the, the Big Bang, this, this part, right? And of course, the simplified uh, version of Big Bang, Bang, right? So you have, that's what happened before the Big Bang and after that space-time appeared and uh, uh, we have, I don't know what we have. So, and by some reason, it's uh, like, it would be interesting to study the, uh, to extend the theory, like you know, for, for convex surfaces in uh, RM, right? People understand pretty much everything. And here, like intrinsic geometry of these convex surfaces breaks into pieces and like you kind of had to fit them together and ask um, reasonable question, right? But it's not, not what I'm talking about, right? So therefore, uh, for me, the source of spaces will be these two parts, right? That will be cat zero spaces. Anytime I have a convex set in the, in the uh, space time, I can take lower part of its boundary or upper part of its boundary, and it will be uh, get zero space. So questions maybe at that point, that's the like where source of spaces. So I uh, like, okay, let me restate the problem, right? I have five points with 10 distances and I need to construct space uh, with uh, non-positive curvature. And here's the source of such space, right? I can take any su convex subset in the space time and take lower part, which is space like, right? Questions, comments, no? Okay. So now where the space space time uh, coming from, right? Like where, where, it's, uh, where it comes from. So you can take any end points in uh, a metric space, and construct a associated uh, quadratic form. So what it is, you take standard simplex in uh, Rn, so Rn minus one in this case, um, and you define W so that the distances uh, so W of X, Y, X, J will be the distance between X, I and X, J in this metric space X. So I keep the same notation uh, for the, maybe let me put X twiddle here. Okay. Like X, I twiddle, X, J. Uh, I forget square here. Okay, so uh, you have, uh, it's easy to see that there is uniquely defined quadratic form that uh, defined by this, uh, this identity. Okay, and now uh, triangle inequality uh, means in this, in this form means that simply if you take the plane defined by any triangle, 
then uh, W is uh, non-negative on this plane. All right. So uh, now if you take four points, right, if you make this construction for four points, you see that uh, the since it's non-negative on the plane, there should be at most one uh, vector, like uh, at, at most eigen, uh, one eigendirection with negative uh, value, right? With negative. And now we can, what we can do, we can take a projection to transversal plane to this vector. Why do you have a negative? If you said it, so, so, I mean, right. So we like, sorry, I, I, yeah, good question. Uh, I don't have negative, right? But if I don't, then my uh, collection of points is simply Euclidean, right? So I'm not really interested in this, uh, in this part. Uh, did I answer? Oh. I, I'm not, not clear why you said you, you so not... so like uh, like I'm I'm interested in the like uh, if there is no negative vectors if there are no negative vectors then uh, this collection of points simply embeddable in Euclidean space so it uh, has non-positive curvature and non-negative curvature at the same time right so I I'm not really like uh, like it doesn't cause any trouble right okay. So if if I have uh, roughly if I have collection of points with uh, the with these such distances such W is non-negative, that uh, this collection of points simply Euclidean. So and Euclidean space is cat zero space and uh, and has non-positive and non-negative curvature. So I already constructed Alex, uh, the the needed space. So I don't I don't need to worry. Yeah. Uh, are you are you are you satisfied with my answer? Hello. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I, I yeah. I'm not so okay. sure, but don't 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 uh, stop. No, still like uh, Euclidean space is an example of Alexander of uh, K zero space, right? Uh, do, do you understand the following? If W, uh, let me just say, if W is greater or equal to zero then uh, uh, set is uh, that is subset set is, is isometric to Euclidean space uh, admits an isometric embedding into Euclidean space do you see this yes no yeah yeah that, that's yeah? okay so so that's uh, like uh, so we uh, only interested in if there are some vectors with no negative so, so the this is trivial case okay 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 so um okay so what we have we have at most one um at most one direction where it's negative and we can project to uh, to transversal plane Right, and after projection, projecting four points in transversal plane, we uh, get, might get one of these two pictures. Right, so uh, this thing uh, can happen for in K0, and this thing can happen in curvature bounded below by zero. Right, and that's exactly like uh, it's just reformulation that uh, this condition, uh, this condition does not satisfy uh, square, and this condition, this part does not satisfy uh, tripod comparison. Okay, so you kind of get another definition of. Um, Alexander spaces, and of course there are many of them, right? So now we want to uh, use it for uh, for five points, 
And Sorry, the pipe, uh, the yeah. graph theory. So in this construction, do all the principles hold or have you moved on from that? Already? Sorry, sorry I, I, I missed the beginning of your question, like first few uh, words. Can you repeat it? Because you started your talk with graph theory. So I'm wondering if you're like still working on it. So do these principles still hold or have you moved on which, from that? Which principle, which principles? Uh, well, for example, I assume that in the second picture, there should be a vertex then. It's not just the four points, like where they cross, there should be a vertex. No, 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 no. Like, like uh, this, uh, this picture is projection. That's a uh, configuration of four points in uh, R2. Okay, and this is graph. This is graph. So, okay, and my, so my point is- that... with four nodes then. Uh, say, say it again, sorry. So you maintain the graph with four nodes, you don't like- Right, this is, these are graphs, these are, these are graphs. And these are projections, that's configurations, right? It's there, sorry for, yeah, I should, I should make it clear, right? But uh, there are two combinatorical, like imagine that you uh, have four points in general position, no three points lie on one line on the plane, right? So combinatorically you have only two pictures, this and this. One of them responsible for non-negative curvature, another responsible for non-positive curvature, okay? And by the way, since you have cat zero space, it's easy to see that like in this case, the lower part or upper part in this case, which takes these three triangles is, a, is the, uh, this lower part, which I uh, defined low uh, before, right? So, which is uh, cat zero space, and of course, it's uh, preserves the distances, right? All edges are uh, isometrically embedded, so it's uh, really isometric embedded into uh, cat zero space, right? And uh, something like this works in uh, uh, for five points. Um, I'm not sure if I, I think I, uh, I if I will start to re start to uh, talk about this, then I will uh, not be able to say something which I really want. So uh, let me uh, let me switch. But I mean, roughly that's uh, that's the idea. You have you have to work combinatorically with uh, uh, you have to apply similar ideas for five points, and it uh, works all the time. You can. Uh, embed uh, five points into R31 and take either lower part or upper part of uh, boundary of its convex, uh, uh, of its convex who. And one of them will be, both of them will be cat zero space, but for one of them, it will be isometric embedding, right? Like, like a four, four point uh, space. So. Um, now, I think there are no questions, right? Can I go further? So uh, you might ask what's happening, what's happening for the six points, right? And for six points, well, the answer, I don't know, true answer, I don't know, but I have a question, which I even afraid to formulate as a conjecture, but I think it's, uh, you know, in uh, mathematics, you often move by beauty of subject, right? So I think it's, uh, if it's true, it will be very beautiful, right? So the question, you, you can uh, construct the, you can see the graph comparison for octahedron graph, right, which I just drew. The complement graph is just three isolated uh, uh, edges, right? And you can, can see the graph comparison for octahedron graph, right, all uh, three. And uh, question, is it uh, octahedron comparison is equivalent to uh, like is the all like all comparison comparison for cat zero space 
So in other words, is it true that six points um, uh, can be embedded in can zero space if and only if it satisfy octahedron comparison? So maybe I should at this point, maybe I should uh, say something like if you uh, look at a graph, right? You in principle, you can take um, any graph you like, uh, for example, this one, right? And consider the graph comparison for this graph. But most of the time, uh, in this graph, you have subgraphs, which uh, like induced subgraphs, which are isomorphic to both of those. Right, and in this case, it's not interesting comparison. For example, here you have a square and you have tripod. Right, in this case, it's not interesting comparison because it implies non-negative and non-positive curvature, and therefore it's just a convex set and Hilbert space, not interesting. But this one does not have induced graphs with uh, which are tripods, but it has induced tri induced graphs with uh, four cycles. So this is stronger, at least formally stronger than uh, square, but maybe it's equivalent. If you add uh, that uh, its length of, uh, uh, the, the space is complete in length, right? Or maybe I should say one more thing about uh, uh, one more result of Tetzel Toyota that uh, actually square implies uh, pentagon and hexagon and so on, which is uh, you, you don't need even that its length, uh, its length metric space, right? So you have certain relation between graphs that one graph is stronger than the other right so uh, questions comments so I, I finished with this part of uh, talk I finished with uh, uh, non-positive curvature and uh, so I, I, I uh, plan to move to non-negative uh, I mean, do you have any intuition, right? So you, you, you're just asking yeah, the just, question, but honestly, do you have any intuition honestly, for it? Or? Honestly, honestly, uh, not much. You just like, yeah, I cannot say if it's true or not. I think it's simply a beautiful question. Um, uh -huh. Maybe I should say, maybe should say one thing. Uh, like uh, there, there are of course, uh, cat zero spaces and there are like best cat zero spaces. It's like product of trees, uh, product of trees and maybe buildings. And uh, one reason I think, like I, I actually, I don't know, I don't know for sure that it's true, but I'm quite sure that uh, the construction for five points, the square condition implies that uh, five points is uh, embedded into product of trees. And I think somehow that's the reason why the proof works because actually we are not considering general cat zero spaces, but very nice ones. Okay. And uh, uh, right. Mm. So I think, I think like uh, it's not like intuition, but the question of uh, if uh, if somebody wants to attack this problem, then probably it makes sense to check product of trees and buildings uh, at first, right? But uh, maybe cat zero general cat zero spaces are like harder to grasp. At least. Yeah. So I'm uh, sorry if I didn't answer your question, right? So, but I said something, right? Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So let me. I also uh, have uh, another uh, one. Is there uh, any reason why? Because you shown this is the second time you show an example of five point graph and a six point. Is there any reason you don't go into seven points? Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, I said it once, right? So for sure, if you make, if you would be able to answer a gram of questions for arbitrary number of points, which uh, in principle I don't see reason why not why such an answer doesn't exist. But you would know too much about Riemannian geometry. You roughly would be able to say anything about uh, non-positively uh, or non-negatively curved Riemannian metrics, 
right? So that's kind of problem hard to expect. And I think uh, best we can do is to do like first first cases like uh, for a small number of points. On the other hand, it, it might look like a marginal question, right? But on the other hand, it's, uh, uh, you know, Topanogov theorem, uh, which defines uh, non-positive and non-negative curve, which you can think. Uh, it's just description of four points, uh, metric spaces in these spaces. And it would be nice to have comparison, metric comparison for a larger number of points, especially if it gives something new, right? So the result of uh, Toyota says that there is nothing new for five points. For six points, we know that there is something new and it would be nice to understand exactly what it is, right? And that's that's why, that's my graph. For seven points, I have no idea what, the, I, I cannot even, I cannot even formulate a conjecture what uh, what's what's there right and i i would be surprised even if it can be formulated in terms of graph comparison right so i so did, did i answer right yeah i did thank uh, you yeah okay so let me move to non-negative curvature and uh, you again the same gram of questions but for curvature bounded below by zero, you may think that it's a singular brother, a singular generalization of spaces with non-negative sectional curvature, or you may define it by graph comparison, which I described, right, for tripod graph, right? And um, maybe uh, as in, uh, uh, as in Kadzira space and even better, we have kind of best, uh, better um, examples of uh, spaces with non-negative curvature. So we have uh, these spaces include all flat, uh, flat complete manifolds. And uh, of course, it's include products of products of uh, circles, uh, and uh, right and maybe uh, all this. There is a spaces between the quotient of Hilbert space by isometric group action. Okay. So uh, we have uh, uh, like the, the spaces, the classes of spaces which I described, uh, they have common feature, right? Uh, close with respect to product and close with respect to rescaling. So that means that again, the answer to the question uh, can be described by a convex cone as for K0 spaces. Right. And it turns out that uh, this, uh, the quotient of Hilbert space and, and therefore all these spaces satisfy certain, um, uh, certain graph uh, comparison. They satisfy a graph comparison for all trees, which is really easy to prove, right? I, I even don't want to, uh, I mean, if you start from right point, it's a, an easy exercise, right? But actually there is an opposite um, opposite statement. If you have, if a tree comparison holds for all possible trees, then uh, the space is a, a subset in the quotient of Hilbert space by a group of isometries. Um, and maybe at the, like at the moment, right? Maybe I should say, uh, maybe I should mention one thing that you might think that a quotient of Hilbert space is a, a very rare thing, and you, I don't know, uh, a rare type of space. Of course, it's rare, but I mean, like uh, for example, S two can be presented as a 
quotient of Hilbert space by isometry group. If you are not surprised, then I'm very happy. If you are surprised, I could um, I could give a, a proof of this if you want, if somebody interested. Uh, nobody interested. <laughs> like I mean, uh, yeah. at least at least at least I'll... tell me tell me is it like do you consider this as a surprising statement? Uh, yeah, I can't. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Well, I. I so, so how long would the proof? No, no, no. It's like one line. One line. So okay. Don't worry. So. Yes. Uh, um, Be interested in seeing. Okay. So I will. I will prove that any compact Lie group. G. Can be uh, described by uh, quotient of Hilbert space by a group of isometry. Okay. So, and once you prove it, of course, you can do also quotients of Lie group. So it's uh, in particular two dimensional sphere, as I promised, will be, uh, will be one of examples. Okay, so you think of, uh, you consider product of uh, few groups. Okay, so we are like, okay, let me just take a GM. And uh, let me uh, make a map from GN to G, which sends G1, GN to the product G1, GN. Okay, so that's a uh, map from one group, one Lie group to another group, uh, to another Lie group. And now this map is uh, submersion. And you, to make it Riemannian submersion, you have to multiply metric on this group by square root of n to make it uh, like uh, Riemannian submersion. So, so I assume you take uh, by invariant metric on uh, groups, right? So that's easy, easy to see that you have to, you, you need a factor. Now n goes to infinity. And in reasonable sense, this product goes to Hilbert space, right? And this map is a, like a quotient by a certain group, which is acting by, I don't know, like you, you can multiply G by H, G2 by H minus one, 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 and G2 by H, two g3 by g h2 minus one and so on so you have a subgroup uh acting so this is actually quotient uh this map is a quotient by some subgroup okay so and as a limit you get hilbert space because you rescale it up so the curvature goes to zero and the limit group which will give you this group so uh, I, of course, it's not proof, but it's a sketch which can mm -hmm. be, can mm -hmm. be made yeah. made as the big question: which limit you take to make Hilbert space, right? And like, what's the how you define limit of the groups? But I mean, I, I yeah, I, at least you believe this is this yeah, is yeah. True yes, then. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's okay. So um, okay, so we. Yeah. In the case of S2, you can just take R3 modulo O3. Yeah, yeah. You, you think of S, S2 as uh, S3 divided by S1, right? So then you can, you can, you, you have to modify this group a little bit. So you no, can I make, it, make it's, it S2. It's even simpler than. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. yes, with S2, uh, uh, yeah, you R3 mean, modulo but, O3. But, you you right. don't need to go to the product of, to the infinite product of. Uh, no, I need I need to I need to go anyway, right? I need to go. So I, I for for general like for I need to take start with the group acting on the space, right? And uh, take to the product, right? So I cannot uh, to to kill the curvature. Uh, I need to rescale up, right? Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so now I will talk about uh, five and six points uh, comparison uh, in the for, for non-negative uh, curvature. So 
you like first of all you you have uh, this definition of uh, spaces with curvature bounded below and you always assume that it's uh, length metric length uh, metric plus uh, complete and then you get uh, more graphs that's kind of standard thing that you can actually uh, um, th this condition implies all star graphs and uh, there is a question what about uh, other trees uh, and it turns out that you can prove that these two trees with two uh, with diameter say three right the simplest uh, cases after uh, after having uh, like after diameter two right so they also follow from this condition so these all these spaces are um, uh, follow from uh, Alexander condition and there is a uh, uh, we, what is known it's done by Lebedeva that uh, this uh, graph gives you something new which uh, does not follow from this okay and there is another cloud right which start from this graph and of course that uh, that sits in the equivalence uh, condition with all graphs with at least four uh, all bipolar graphs all bipolar trees with at least uh, four uh, edges from uh, end vertices from one and right so get like i don't know okay so that's uh, and it turns out that this condition which like uh, makes new cloud right that um, responsible for something uh, interesting in uh, optimal transport optimal transport all right i have just four minutes uh it's related right so i just have four minutes so i will try to <laughs> say something right so quickly so uh, optimal transport is known for giving some curvature conditions for uh, uh, like related to Riemannian geometry right and most people know uh, it for uh, uh, synthetic definition of Ricci curvature bound right but also uh, there is a another uh, so-called uh, MTW inequality which is uh, related to the following uh, statement first uh, I think it was discovered by Luis Caffarelli okay so um what what he did i assume you i, I suppose everybody knows what uh, the the optimal transport right um so i assume you have a convex set in uh, euclidean space and you have you have two measures mu and mu on this convex set with uh, non-zero uh, density on this set Okay, and you can see the optimal transport, which moves one point to another, which uh, moves uh, two measures one from another. And the question, and the, what Caffarelli proved that this map is actually continuous. Okay, so in general, uh, the uh, optimal transport might be not continuous, right? You like some part of measure will go to right, some part of measure will go to uh left or right yeah so and here we have discontinuity right and here we convexity and the density bounded away from zero guarantees um, guarantees continuity 
And the question, where, uh, like, what uh, Mart, uh, Trudinger and Wang uh, were considering is the question uh, when uh, a Riemannian manifold uh, has the same property. And they came up to with certain uh, curvature condition, uh, which is not local, which is kind of uh, a anal uh, non-local analog of uh, sectional curvature, non-negative sectional curvature. And uh, it's almost proved now that it's uh, almost equivalent to the uh, continuity of optimal transport, roughly. Uh, it implies uh, continuity of optimal transport implies this MTW condition and uh, li slightly strongest version of MTW condition implies continuity of optimal transport and probably they are, um, they are the same. Okay, so and it turns out that what we, uh, the condition, this, this graph, right, which I described earlier, uh, implies MTW. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me repeat once more that the, all I wanted to say, right, if you will face some geometric problem in metric spaces, uh, the graph comparison, the, the way uh, to the, this um, encoding of inequalities using graph might be useful. Right, that's like on big scale, that's all I wanted to say. So uh, I think that's the end. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions? Stop share. So can you, uh, sorry, can, can, you back, can you go back to the last slide? Uh, I will try. Yeah. Uh, the 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 one on the Matt Rudiger Wang. Yeah. So the so you so 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 the the um, am I understanding correctly the statement? You're just saying that the condition of Matt Rudiger and Wang is equivalent to the comparison with no, it's it's that not graph. Proved. It's not proved. Ah, uh, it's not proved. Uh, so uh, you could... sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I I didn't I didn't. Um... I didn't uh, listen to the end of your question. So what is it? Uh, so so you're saying MTW okay, so, is equivalent to what? Uh, okay. So if you if you go back, you have that um, that uh, red arrow. So here you're saying that the com so so from from, gra on... from from graph comparison we know mm -hmm. that uh, it implies mtw it implies ah, okay but right. you don't know it's, the reverse e, e, i don't know and i suspect not but there ah. are good chances there are good chances for example that these two guys are equivalent actually the, like the, there are a lot of questions there right so you like i mean more questions than answers around here mm -hmm. so for example uh, I, this is pretty almost equivalent to a so-called MTW uh, non-orthogonal, right? So there is little stronger version of MTW, which is equivalent. And uh -huh. it is suspected that this is uh, stronger. But uh, there are no examples which actually show that it's stronger. They might be equivalent, these two mm -hmm. guys. Right, but mm -hmm. I suspect that, uh, yeah, um, uh, I don't know. The, I, my feeling that some little weaker conditions like this one might be MTW, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but anyway, I think it's good, uh, good uh, evidence that uh, graph comparison can capture something interesting, right? So this, uh, this, if I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm not an expert in the topic, but this math tuning at one condition is a kind of non-local condition, right? Right, right. It's like two points. So two point condition, right? Right. So you're telling me that. So, so what you're telling us is that uh, as long as you were staying, because okay, so the conditions that you had at the beginning with the smaller graphs, they're kind of local, right? So because if no, 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 no. they're also not local. It's all, all conditions I'm 
Stalin, it's like for globally for for points in the metric space, right? So there are no yeah, no they are... bounds. There, mm -hmm. there, there are no proofs of uh, like globalization. If you have it locally, it might happen that again. That's an interesting question. If some of these conditions, or maybe all. Um, uh, have globalization, so you have the Panogos theorem. If you have it locally, then you have this condition globally, but nobody knows. Ah, and so there. Okay, so there. Yeah. So these graph comparisons are actually more powerful than just saying. I I I was under the impression that uh, when you have it with uh, a few points. For sure, it's, for sure it's more it, it tells you more than just a tensor at the point right for mm -hmm. if you have this uh, tripod condition mm -hmm. then it's equivalent right but it's uh, not not easy theorem right so that's, uh, uh, right that's what i meant i mean yeah, sure yeah. But, but but the but tripod for others, but the... We don't, for others we don't know right okay but for the tripod that is equivalent right so yes, it's just yes, the the, yes. the 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 uh, the uh, the, uh, the curvature condition right 